Northumberland, a land steeped in history of kings and castles, of monks and islands, dark skies and wild landscapes. As winter waves break on its windswept coastlines, wildlife forages along its rocky shores. Many species call this place home. Winter visitors like the dainty purple sandpiper, which feeds right on the rocky edge. Returning to the far north to breed each spring and the oyster catcher with their black and white plumage contrasting with a bright orange bill. But there's one species that's deeply tied to the people and history of this land, the eider duck. Known locally as Cuddy's duck or St Cuthbert's duck, the eider has shared a bond with St Cuthbert since the Middle Ages. It's a popular belief that St Cuthbert created the world's first nature reserve and bird protection laws on the Farne Islands in the 7th century. Northumberland now proudly supports a nationally important population of eider ducks with a marine conservation zone between Berwick and St Mary's Island created specifically for this species. As winter slowly merges into spring, eiders start their journey of finding a mate, gathering in mixed flocks near to their sheltered breeding grounds. It's at this time of year that the males begin their unmistakable courtship calls. Unpaired males have bouts of well-rehearsed display, shaking their heads from side to side before bobbing up and down and dramatically throwing their heads back, letting out their distinctive call. An impressive effort to attract a female mate. As a sea duck, eiders feed entirely at sea or in coastal environments. They've been recorded feeding on over 180 different species of marine animals, including mussels, crabs and starfish. Eiders use a variety of different techniques to find their food, sometimes diving to depths of up to 60 meters to find their prey, using their powerful wings and large feet to move through the water at speed. In early spring, females will spend more time feeding to increase their body weight in preparation for developing eggs and to sustain them through incubation. It's at this time of year that our human activity can cause the most significant impact. Much of the Ida's charm comes from its behaviour to be quite confiding, known for approaching people and even eating chips and bread. Unfortunately, these Fatty human foods are not part of their natural diet and can cause long-term problems for their survival. Eiders not only feed at sea, but also along the shoreline, occasionally in places we like to walk and take our dogs. Resting and feeding on the shoreline, female eiders are easily disturbed by our activities, reducing the precious time they require for feeding. But we can help simply by looking for wildlife before we approach areas and giving birds another wildlife space. And at least 40 to 50 meters can help reduce disturbance and increase their chances of raising healthy chicks. When female eiders are ready to lay their eggs, they head inland from the shore to find a nest site. The nest is made of a shallow depression in the ground, firstly with pieces of dried grass, then lined with down from the female's breasts. The down acts as insulation, keeping the eggs warm and hides the eggs when the female is away from the nest. Just two days after hatching, the ducklings are led to the sea, sometimes traveling long distances to new feeding grounds. When they arrive, they often form large creches with many different broods of a variety of sizes, all feeding together. Their safety in numbers, with more watchful eyes in case of danger, both natural and human. Eventually, the chicks will leave the safety of their mothers and aunties, often returning to breed in the same areas where they were born. 
the wild, windswept coastline of Northumberland.